I'm Patrick Bailey with IQ List. Today is June 4th, 2022, and in this video I'm going to talk about chamfers and lofts in Fusion 360. Okay, let's get right into it. So here's Fusion 360, and for those who aren't familiar with this, what we're talking about is chamfers. So if I go down here to modify, go to chamfers, you'll see what this is. It's kind of a way to kind of um, put an angle on things at the very edge and kind of, I wouldn't say smooth things out, but smooth things out. There's also a similar idea as fillets. Fillets, though, are more rounded. And so they're really nice. And, th and the other thing I'll be talking about are lofts. Lofts over here is where you connect two ob two um, two dimensional objects and they kind of connect together. And they can be used for very different things. But in this case, I'm going to kind of go over my use case uh, when I'm doing refrigerator magnets all the time. So here we are. I got my origin. I'll right click on here. We'll create a sketch and we'll do a couple of things. So we'll just start real simple. I'll come here, press S to bring up my shortcuts. And I'll just do a, well, I'll do a two-point rectangle. We'll hit there, and we'll just uh, make a rectangle here. And I'll do L for a line, just because I want to connect it, because I'm a weird guy. Hit S, C, you know, my, my circle for my diameter. And we'll just click on that and finish sketch. And I'll take both these guys. Now I'm in 3D mode. Click on them, press Q for my press pull tool. And we'll just make them, let's say, 20. Boom. Okay, so I got these two-dimensional objects, and what I can do, now that I'm in 3D space, I can click on that, or I can, uh, well, let's just hit my S for my shortcut, which I already have the chamfer on here, or I could have gone up here and chosen um, chamfer too, same thing, but I have my shortcut, so I'll click on that, and it basically says, select the ones you want to do. You don't have to do all of them, like I could just do two, but I'll do all four here, and then... Boom. We can pull it in. Probably better to enter the number in. You can see there's that 10 millimeters. I'll just say 2. And that gives us our nice little chamfer here. I'll hit OK. And you could do that on the side too. Like I could set, I could do it and just select these two. Boom. And go in. I'll go in 5. And you can see how to adjust the whole thing. So it's useful for a lot of things. Now, well, I'll do the same thing. Let me do the same thing with the circle. Chamfer. Boom, boom. We'll go in two. Now, I use this a lot for the magnets because what I do is I found it's a little bit better if I have some kind of chamfer where it touches the fridge just because it makes it a little bit easier to pull off the fridge. You can get a little your fingernails behind there and it works pretty well. Now, with circles and squares, it works really easy. You just kind of do that. Um, but in some cases, when you get more complex shape, what do you do? Uh, you can do a complex shape and attempt to do a chamfer, but sometimes when you're trying to do the calculation, it gets a little confused. Uh, so you can always try it, and if it's not too complex a shape, it'll try to figure it out, but sometimes the shape is a little too complex, and it really just can't figure it out. So let's go and make a new comp component. Let me say a complex shape. Mm -hmm. I know I have some complex shape that don't work, but let me see if I can manufacture one. Okay, so I'll have an origin here. We'll create a sketch. And from here I'll say, boom, boom, boom. I lost my, I'll go insert. I'll insert an SVG. So I'll go grab an SVG file from my computer. And I have one that I just did for this video. There we go. Okay, three prints. So I have this Jeep one. Boom. Also, let you know before you know if you're doing SVGs, when you pull it in, it just pulls it in. It has that one size size. So what you probably want to do before you pull it in, which I don't care for this video because I'm just testing, it's probably a good idea to make a rectangle or a circle roughly the size you want. That way, when you pull it in, you can readjust it the right size you want. Because readjusting it afterwards starts to get more complex. It could be done, but it gets more complex. So I'll say okay. There's my little Jeep thing, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this a little bit. Uh, and I just learned this a couple weeks ago. Normally, well, they, I can click on this line, and since this line connects all the way around, it's continuous, I can double click, and it tries to figure it out, and it, and it usually finds it. So you double click on it's kind of nice. I'll hit S for my shortcuts, and then here I'm going to use the offset. So if you don't have offset set up, you can always search for it. I can search for offset in here and, and find it. But it's part of my shortcuts, so I'll say offset, and then I can expand it. So I'll say five, let's see, six, let's see, can I go 10? 
Sometimes it gets complex and doesn't want to do it. Okay, six works. So we'll say six. And then I'll come down here and I'll click on this thing, do an offset. And we'll say six again. Boom. And I'll come back and trim some of these pieces off. Oh, for those who don't know what I'm doing, um, if you press T for trim, and you'll see how it turns red here, when you click on that, it'll make it disappear up to where the next line is. So I was trying to figure out where you might want to cut it, so I'm in trim mode right now. And then I will trim that. Boom, boom. Uh, oh, let me undo that for a second. Uh, undo. T for trim, get that. There's also other things. This is part of modifier. You can also extend. So I hit extend, and if I click on this, it'll probably try to assume where to go. Click on that again. It'll try to assume where you want thing extended. So extend kind of trim and extend, very useful. But I don't need those right now. So now, I think I am good. Finish sketch. We got that, okay. So I'm gonna try a couple of things with this. So first of all, I'll just kind of select, I'm in 3D mode now, so I'll just select everything, hit S, well, hit Q for my press pull tool, select everything, and we'll say, uh, we'll just say eight, boom. Raise it up eight. Now we can make an attempt here. I will hit chamfer, click there, and also here you can probably double click if I remember right, and it will try, maybe not. Okay, so much for that. So, you're gonna make me fight this whole way, aren't you? Okay, we'll try it again. And this is where it starts to get complex. You have this really complex thing where it's probably not going to figure it out very well. You got all these little tiny pieces that connect. Now of course you can go back and you know attempt to clean it up by simplifying it, but we're not going to do that for this particular video. Boom. There's all these little pieces. Oh. I spent all this time just to show you that it's probably going to fail. And if it succeeds, wow. Hooray. But it will probably fail at some point. Okay, there we go. Uh, now if I try to chamfer it, see it's going to reject that. So I can, I can go in two, and it's going to go, hey, it's too complex to do. I can't do this. So it's just not going to work. Now, what I could do, let me go back and edit my press pull. I could edit that feed, well, let me not, let me cancel that. Another thing that could possibly work, but I don't think it'll work in this case, I could right click on this bottom part, uh, say create a sketch, which kind of resets it, and say finish the cat. I didn't draw anything, but I, my, I, I have a new plane I can deal with. Press Q for press pull, pull it down, but then I can angle the degree. I can say negative 45. It's not gonna like that. I might be able to do a negative two. It might, no, not even that. It's too complex. It doesn't know what to do. So, okay, so here's a perfect example. I can't do it in the way that, in the manner that I want to. So let me come back and show a way to do it. First of all, I'll click on, he click on this plane over here and say create an offset plane. So I'll create an offset plane and we'll say negative two. And so now I got this offset plane that I can sketch on just so I can move things around. Okay, I'll remove the bodies just for a moment so I don't have to look at them. Bring that back, double click on that, copy. So I've copied that because I want to put that in a lower plane. Now I click on that plane that we just made, say edit sketch, and I'll say paste. And at first minute, it looks like we just put it in the same spot, which I do want in the same spot, just a different spot in the Z. Oh, let's see, maybe I didn't do it different. 
Oh, maybe I didn't. Finish sketch. Okay. Oh, because I'm back in my history. <coughs> Try it one more time. Control C, I'll copy that. I'll click on this new plane I made, say edit sketch, say uh, edit sketch. I don't think that's in a new plane. Or not by much. Uh, you know, let me let me undo this. Let me make that make sure that plane is further off. So I'm going to delete that. Uh, create an offset plane again. This time I'll drag it so you can really see. Negative 20, there we go. Negative 20, we'll exaggerate. Hit OK. Now, third or fourth time's a charm, right? So I'll copy that again, right click on my new plane, say, uh, let's get out of that. Right click on there, say create a sketch. And I'll paste, which looks like it overlays which is exactly what I want. Ah, there we go. Now you can see it's in a lower plane. Cool. So we'll say, okay. And then what I'll do is I'll hide that upper sketch just so I can see the lower one now. Click on that. S for my shortcuts. Do an offset again. But this time we're going to go in. So we'll go in. Looks like I... Like I can go in six without fighting too much, or five. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now that we got that, what I can do, flip this upside down, bring back the body, and you can see that body is way further up. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll finish my sketch. Let me get out of the, the 2D mode. Hit S for my shortcuts and do loft. Or, you know, loft is also right up here, under create. And I'll choose the back side of that plane. And I'll come in here to that sketch and choose the inner one. Boom. Oh, and it failed to do it. It does not like it. Ah, oh, too complex, huh? Okay, let me see if we can adjust a little bit. Let me adjust this, uh, let me edit this feature, rather than negative 20 we'll go negative 10 I'll put it closer, I'm not sure if that's going to help or not it did not help, come on aye, 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 aye. okay this is just even too complex for it to deal with that Let's try again. Okay, let me see if I can... <laughs> Great demo, huh? So I failed on that, so even this was too complex. Let me uh, see if I can figure this out or simplify it just enough to get this to work. Okay, I was looking back on what I did before, because I did this before with the exact same one, and I didn't have that sharp angle here, so I just kind of put this in here to make it a little softer, and I think this will work. But let me go back, let me go, I went back in my history, let me go delete everything I did before, just wipe it all out, so we can kind of start fresh. Okay, there we go. So, now we can select, view that, okay, now we can select all that, Q for press pull tool. I'll say I'll say eight. How about fifteen. How about twenty. There we go. Twenty. Then I'll remove the body. Double click on all this. Oh, we got a. There we go. Copy that. Right click on this. Make a. Oh, let me get off this. Create an offset plane. We'll call it negative ten. Boom. Create a sketch on that offset plane. We'll paste what we have. And hopefully we can see that it is not off center. Oh, but I am missing a line. Okay. We'll hit OK. 
I'll just connect it by hand, I guess. Okay. So now we're good to go again. Now I'll click on all that, remove the first sketch, hit S for my shortcut, choose offset, and we'll say negative five, hit OK. And also to make it a little simple, I'm going to double click on my outer line and I'll make, change the line type to construction. That way it won't, it, I won't be able to easily click on it or to use it as a plane. Okay, so we'll bring back the body. Go down here, S key, loft, choose that bottom one, choose the top one there, and then choose the bottom one. Ah, there we go. Cray. Okay, see, there you go. So that's a that's kind of what I want. So sometimes, I guess a good example overall that I failed here, sometimes shapes are just so complex, it's really hard to figure out, figure out that loft. So you may have to soften things like I had to here. Uh, but also, when when chamfer doesn't work, and you want an effect like this, loft may be the answer. So that's what I've been using lately for a bunch of things. So anyway, nice little demonstration. Hopefully that helps someone out there. Uh, but also if you're making magnets, it's probably a good idea to kind of chamfer that edge, make it easier to kind of pull off the fridge, right? Okay. Hoi, hoi, hoi. Didn't go as planned, but sometimes those are better videos. So we'll see how this fares. But with that, let's wrap this whole thing up uh, with a reminder that 3D printing is an engineering adventure that you're on. You can develop your skills and your knowledge. You can take this in so many ways. You can make a business out of this. You can teach others and you can make some amazing designs. So design it, engineer it. I just restarted my 70 hour failed giant bolt print. Kind of sad it failed, but it forced me to redesign some stuff and I think the new print is going to be even better. I'll post some pics of my progress and when it's all done, I'm sure to do a video on it.